Hello everybody and welcome to another video about Obsidian. In this video I'm going to talk a little bit about my system for taking notes on physical objects. Um, there's also, just to let you know, a, a written version of this entire thing on my website. If you prefer written articles rather than videos, feel free to check out the description of this video for a link to that. Uh, and this video is part of a larger series that I'm doing um, where I'm sharing all my various different Obsidian systems. All of them are originally published as blog posts, so you can find them on my website. Now I'm turning them into videos because some people prefer videos. Um, these systems include daily notes, meeting notes, people notes, book notes, and physical objects, which is what you're looking at right here. Um, if you want to skip ahead to a certain part in the video, because I do ramble for a little bit, feel free to check the chapters in the description of the video as well and just jump ahead to what you want to see. So. What I'm going to be discussing in this video, first, a little bit about why you might want to have a note-taking system for physical objects, and also what sort of objects you want to put in, and specifically which ones you should not put in. Um, I'm going to share the system as I use it today, so what you have seen me using for the past, uh, I don't know, several years. Um, and then we're gonna create it. It's pretty simple. If you've seen some of my other videos, it's gonna be the same format as that. But what we're gonna do is create two notes, the MOC, map of contents file, the template file. Then we're gonna create a button so that we can press a button and then create a new note from that template. And we're gonna test the system, make sure it works. And, and that's gonna be what you got in this video. So let's kick things off with a little bit about this system. So this physical object system is probably one of the most useful Obsidian ones that I have. I built this a little bit later than some of my other processes, like the daily note or the meeting note, that sort of stuff. Um, and this system is one that just sort of fell into place over time. It was created based on how I was using notes in the first place, which is usually the best way for systems like this to go uh, to fall into place rather than just trying to plan and, and predict how you're going to use it uh, at the very beginning. Um, so I think the reason that I had some resistance to this sort of system is because I didn't really think I needed or wanted an inventory of all my stuff. I am not a retail store, uh, nor am I like a minimal minimalist who's trying to just track every single object that I own. So it didn't really appeal to me to have a tracking system for physical objects in my notes. Um, but really what happened was back in 2021, I was in the market for a new television and I was trying to figure out what size to get because we're in a one bedroom apartment in New York and you can't just get the biggest TV possible. You got to get one that fits. And so I realized that I needed information about the current model and I wanted to take notes about the different models that I was looking at. And of course I was using Obsidian to take notes on all of that. And as I was going through and doing the research, I was also tending to my digital garden, so to speak, which is basically as you're doing research and looking through, you're also kind of just cleaning up your notes and, and changing them around and, and fixing them up as you go. And through the process of that, I ended up creating two notes, one for each of the televisions, the previous one, and then a new model that I was looking at. And the format was really great. It was in a format that I could basically use as a foundation for a template. So that's exactly what I did. I just turned it into a template and set up the system. Um, and then I went through and there was a few other objects that I added to it, but really I added objects to this over time rather than all at once. Uh, and I definitely recommend you do the same thing as well. Okay, so in terms of the system design and what I was thinking about here, the goal of the physical object Obsidian template is to capture specific physical objects, as I said, not every physical object. Uh, I wanted to, or, uh, to create a system that would store objects where the price or the purchase date may someday be relevant. I might want that someday. Um, maybe there are item specifications or dimensions that I may need to reference one day. Um, maybe the item has a specific model number that you want to remember. Um, it's possible the object relates in meaningful ways to other objects or other things that you own. And you want to document or, or have that connection handy. Um, or if there's specific notes about the object or about the physical thing that you want to save. Things like instructions, guidelines, uh, books, d different things that are related to it that you can keep in there. And lastly, 
if you want to track how often uh, you use an object or how often you need to replace something such as like ink toner thing, that might be something you want to track. Um, that could all go into the system as well. So additionally, I decided to build the system around physical objects that I physically own. So this isn't just something that I'm researching that I don't own yet or like things that I want. It's not a wish list. The system for me is around things that I've actually pulled the trigger on and purchased. That might work for you. That might not work for you. Fortunately, this is a highly flexible thing and you can just modify this and change this to however you, you want. Or you can have one for actual physical objects that you own and one for ones that you don't own. Whatever you want to do, you can use this as a foundation to build that yourself. All right, so what we've been staring at this whole time is going to be my physical object map of contents MOC file. So this is where I have a data view table. You can see the code here. So the data view plugin is pulling in all of these files. You can cover over them and see details about them. You have a link to the template right here, which we're gonna create in a minute. And then there's a button right here that creates a new physical object. And you can see this is using the MetaBind plugin. And so there's MetaBind code that creates this new physical object. Here's an example of the television note that I was talking about earlier. I have specs, I have related items, I have notes that I wanted to take during it. You have tags, and then at the very top, you have properties, things like purchase date, price, URL, all that sort of stuff that you can save. And again, with your template, you can add whatever you want. Um, but with that said, let's actually just jump into an empty vault and get this all set up. All right, here we are in an empty vault. And there are two things that I've done that I did not show in this video. The first one was to install a theme that I like. The theme is LYT Mode by Nick Milo. And the other thing is to add a bunch of folders, some directory structure that I like. So I have an MOC, which is Map of Contents. You can see one note from a previous video. Um, there's spaces for different things that I have. There's a physical objects. So this system is going to rely on two, oh, well, I guess three areas. There is extras templates. There is MOC as a folder and there's spaces, physical objects. And so our system is going to look at everything that is in this single folder when it's doing that data view table there. So the actual details about this directory structure is written down in the blog post, or you can just copy it here, or you can just modify the template or the code to fit whatever system you are using. With that said, let's jump in and create the, the first note. So I'm gonna do Command N to create a new note, and let's call this Physical Objects MOC. And usually with map of contents files, I like to use an emoji at the beginning of the name just to make it easier to see at a glance. So I like this shopping bag for physical objects. Cool, so now let's get this template from uh, the web. So I'm gonna open Safari. Uh, this is on GitHub. Again, this is all linked in the description. This is the MOC template file. I'm gonna click on raw. Select all, so Command A, Command C for copying. Let's go back to Obsidian, and we can just paste this in here. So you'll notice in here, instead of a pretty button and the table here, these are just code blocks. This is because we don't have the plugins installed yet. So let's just create the other file, and then we're going to install the plugins. So I'm gonna do, actually, let's move this. So Command P to open up the command palette. Type in move. Make sure you select move file to another folder. And then we're gonna put this in MOCs. So all of them are together in our map of contents directory. Great, let's close this. Close that, command N, new file. Uh, and let's call this template physical object. Great, and then we're gonna go back to the web We'll go over here into GitHub. Uh, this is the physical object template. Just go to raw, command A, copy that, go back to Obsidian and paste that in here. You'll notice that when you're looking in Safari, this has different code blocks. It looks a little bit different. It doesn't, it has formatting once you paste it into Obsidian. Uh, if you wanna actually edit it in the same way it looks on GitHub, you can toggle. There's source mode here, um, but we can just keep this 
pretty. It doesn't actually matter. The next thing we want to do is move this again. So let's move this to templates. Uh, sorry, move current file to another folder and then templates. Great. And so now we can see in extras templates, we have this physical object template there now too. So those are the only two files that we need. Now let's just install the plugins. So I'm going to close this. Although you could just leave it open, go to settings on the bottom corner here, community plugins, uh, make sure you open that. If restricted mode is on, make sure you turn it off. Uh, restricted mode just means you cannot install third party plugins. Uh, and so you want to turn that off so you can install community plugins. So if you click on here to browse, um, so two of the uh, plugins we're using are so popular, they always just show up on the front page. So you can obviously search in here, but data view is the first one that we want to do. So we can just click on this and then install and then enable. Great. And the other one is templater, which shows the popular ones right here. So templater should be right here for you. Uh, if not, just search for it, install, enable, and the last one we want is MetaBind. So search for MetaBind, click here, install, enable. Simple enough. Now, templater right here. Let's set our template folder. Wonderful. All right, now let's go back to our physical objects MOC. And you'll notice this actually looks okay now. Here's our button from the MetaBind, and then here's our data view table, which doesn't have anything in it just because we don't have any template files yet. Um, this button might work out of the box for you, depending on what your directory structure and how everything is, but let's play it safe and completely delete this, and let's create the MetaBind button using the builder. So Command P to open the command palette, type in MetaBind, and then find MetaBind Open Button Builder. So click on that. Let's title this New Physical Object. You can call it whatever you want. The bottom here, we're going to do Templater Create Note and then click Add Action. The template file, the one that we just created, uh, template, comma, physical object. For the folder, there's a folder for physical objects. Uh, and then the file name, new physical object. Great. So let's copy this to clipboard. And then we'll paste it in here. And then let's click on this to see if it works. There we go. So we now have uh, a new folder here. Let's go into uh, spaces physical objects, you can see that it created this new note here. And then you can title this ob object A, whatever you want, fill in the price, the URL, all the specs, all the details. And then when we go back to the physical objects MOC, we can see it's showing up here, uh, both with the file name as well as the date. So. Now you have a working physical object system. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you've liked this, check out some of my other videos, leave a like, subscribe, all of that stuff. Uh, I've just started creating new videos again after a long break. So any sort of feedback encourages me to make more. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching.